Hello, Mr. Prentice here again, and today I want to talk about probabilities for binomial distributions. Okay, so hopefully you have completed the work on Bernoulli trials and seen that in a Bernoulli trial, um, we have uh, a few things, but what we should have seen is that the probability that, say, x is equal to 0 we notated that as Q, as a probability of a failure. And we've seen that the probability that X is equal to one, we said is P, is the same as probability of success. Okay, so we denoted that you give it a one for a success, or we gave it a zero for a failure. So in a binomial distribution, what we're talking about is performing a number of Bernoulli trials um, more than more than one amount of time. Okay, so well, technically it could be one one time, or so I could say one time or more. But we want to look at a more like if you did this fifty times or a hundred times. Okay, so a binomial distribution, a binomial, or I should say a binomial experiment, is conducting a number of um, Bernou uh, Bernoulli trials, okay? So it is conducting multiple Bernoulli trials. Now, what this means is we can get a number that's more than one. So, for example, if you conduct two Bernoulli trials, you could get a success for the first one and a success for the next, and therefore we will say that uh, x is equal to 2. You've got two successes. So, that means that for this Bernoulli, uh, sorry, binomial experiment, we'll say that x is the number of the successes and can be more than 1. So, x is... The number of successes and can be more than one. And if we go through and then we we get that, we would say um, we could follow the pattern and we should be able to work out with this pattern that e.g. if n is equal to 2 Okay, so we've got two trials, then we know that x could be any number in the set, okay, x could be 0, or it could be 1, or it could be 2. Okay, so if you conduct the trial two times, you could have, you know, no successes, or one success, or two successes, okay, and you could continue that pattern and say, if n is equal to three trials, you could have um, 0, 1, 2, or three, or you would therefore say for n trials, okay, x is going to be a number that goes from zero uh, all the way to, to n, okay, so you could have all the way up to n uh, different um, successes, okay, if you've got every single experiment uh, or every single thing was a success. Okay, so this is our uh, binomial um, experiments. And then what we're going to look at is the results of a binomial distribution. And we say that uh, if we wanted to write this down, we write that x is distributed. Okay, and I talked about this is distributed. And it's, in dis it's distributed binomially. Um, for n trials, then p is our, you know, these are our two parameters. For n is the number of trials we've got, and p is the, say, probability of your success. So this is what we've got um, as our notation, saying that x is distributed binomially. And then that we've got these um, two different parameters there, okay? Uh, some people shorten this and say that... Uh, Instead of writing bin for binomial, they'll just say b. 
however, your syllabus uh, has a bin there. So if you do see a B without bin, that's the same thing. Okay. So this will mean that, for example, uh, if you had X is distributed binomially um, and you got like something like this, and I'll talk about that in a second, we'll see straight away that you perform the experiment three times and the chance of success is 0.5. And we want to look at, um, you know, all our different probabilities of, of getting our X's, okay? So uh, that's what we'll look at and see. So I'll rub that off. And what we want to do in this exercise is we want to work out, okay, we want to work out the probability that X is going to equal, um, you know, some number R. So that's what we're, I'm going to talk about uh, for this next bit of time. Okay, we want to work out the probability that we might get X equals, say, zero times, so the probability of getting no successes, or the probability that X is equal to one, so, you know, one success and so and so forth, okay? So that's what we've got there. So let's have a look for the first one, which is the symmetrical um, distributions. Okay, so it's equally likely both ways or P is equal to half. Okay, so our symmetrical distributions is going to say that you've got a half chance of success and a half chance of um, failure. Okay, so let's have a look at this example. E.g. flipping a coin is an example of a um, of a symmetrical one because it's got you know half chance of getting a head or half chance of getting a fail, so um, you know, like a tail. So we're going to say flipping a coin three times. And trying to get heads, just say three times, and trying to get heads. Okay, we're flipping a coin three times, and we're trying to get heads. So, what we what we'll look at with this is we would say that x is going to be binomially distributed, uh, n is three, and the probability of success is five. Okay, so let's try to find out what is the probability that x is equal to 1. So it's saying, what's the probability that you get, you get 1 head? And you could go through and, you know, um, work this out. And let's do this as a tree diagram first and see what we've got. So, for the first one. You're going to flip it three times, so you're either going to get the first one, you're going to get a success, you know, you'll get one of with a success, or zero, you know, is a fail, and then the next one, you've got one or zero for your second toss, and then the third, one or zero, one or zero, one or zero up, you're going to be messy, one. Or zero. Okay? So we can look at this and we can just use this quick tree diagram to see this. Um, the probability that um, we would go through and get this is, you know, this probability here for one success. Okay, we've got a fail and then a fail and then a success. Or you might have a fail and then a success and then a fail. So this branch, or you might have a success and then a fail and then a fail. So there was three ways of the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, of the eight that we would actually get a probability of, of um, or get one, get one head. So straight away, we could just use that in our tree diagram and see that the probability that x is equal to 1 is 
three of the eight. Um, or we could go through and and have a look and then see what this means uh, in terms of our combinatorics. Okay, so let's have a think about this and see. So you could you're going through and you say you're performing the experiment three times, and you could either get let's let's have a look in terms of combinatorics. So you could either get um, first time, the second time, the third time. And in each of these ways, you can get a P or like you can get a, a, a success or a fail. Okay, so what we would, we would get is, for example, you could get a success and then a fail and then a fail. So that's, um, you know, one way, or you could have got like the second branch, you, you know, zero, one, zero, you could have got a fail success and then a fail, or you could have got for the three ones, the, the, the third way is zero, zero, one, you could have got a fail, and then a fail, and then a success, um, or we didn't even need to go through and work that out, because we could have seen that there was NCR um, ways that this could have actually occurred. Okay, there was NCR ways that this could have occurred, we had, uh, what I mean by that is, let's, let's look at it, we had three um, three different we want to choose from three we want to choose the one okay so we'll do like three c one which is which is three okay so this is you know the number of ways we could have actually got this the number of ways we could have actually done this is three that's how what we just found there was three paths to get Okay, and notice that this isn't the same as 3 over 8, because each of these paths, each of these paths are not a probability of 1. So this path here, for example, is 0 0.5 times, as that branch, or there's 0 0.5 in that branch, just say, so it's 0 0.5 times 0 0.5, times 0 0.5. So this path has a probability of has a probability of 0.5 cubed, which is 1 over 8. Okay? This this one's got 1 over 8. This one here is 1 over 8 and this one here is 1 over 8. So I guess what we want to realize with this is there's NCR ways and the total number of ways, the total number of ways we could have just looked at from this is that there was, you know, two choices, two choices and two choices. So there's uh, two cubed, which is there was eight ways. And that's why we get our three over eight. Okay. Now, what's this? What's this? mean so we've worked out the probability of getting one uh, head is three over eight and if we look into this and did this for what's the probability of getting zero ways what's the probability of getting that we need to have it that high okay so one two let me have a look one two three. so let's make it like that here Okay, if we if we went through and did this, then the probability of getting zero or one or two or three, which is the most it will get up to. Um, let me not make the same same mistake as last time and actually put this axis here going up at zero. Okay, just so uh, this probability, say function looks good um, but then we could go through and we could work this out so we've got uh, where's my ruler so the probability of getting a zero getting none was what, one way okay there was this branch here yeah one way the probability of getting one is oops back 
the, the probability of getting one should have been three ways. Okay, the probability of getting a two is also, uh, this is just frustrating, I'm just going to draw up a pencil, uh, is also should have been three ways, and the probability is of getting a three was one way. So this would, would, would be actually what it looks like. We had a one in three chance, two in three there, and then a one in three, sorry, one in eight. So one in eight, two in eight, three in eight. And this is our, what's called our binomial distribution. Okay, it goes through, you could draw the polygon on that and it's looking like that. Um, but we can see what it does is it's following a symmetrical distribution and we can see it's um, 3C0, 3C1, 3C2 and 3C3, which is what we've just got um, here. So 3C1 was, was 3 up. Okay, so hopefully if we just do, I'll just do another one really, really quick and then we'll go to ones that are not symmetrical. Okay, so let's say, but um, EG2, it's not letting me move it up now, it is. What about if we are flipping five coins? Okay, so if we are flipping five coins, and hopefully straight away we can see, look, it's a symmetrical distribution, so therefore the probability that x is going to equal to 0 is um, 5c0 is going to be 1, so it's 1 of, over um, you know, um, 2 to the power of 5, so 1 over 32 ways of the 32 ways, probability that x is going to equal to 1, we should know is there's 5 of the 32 ways, so that's uh, 5c1, okay, I'll get my calculator, and show you 5c1 was was five ways. Um, of course, it, the probably of getting one coin is there's five ways. It was either the first one that flipped or the second one or the third or the fourth or the fifth. But now the numbers like the probability that x is equal to 2 is going to be 5c2, 10 ways. And then we're going to get 5c3, which is 10 and then 5, and then 1. So it's going to go 10 over 32, and then 10 over 32, and then 5, and then 1, going down. So we could straight away see this. It's going to be a symmetrical distribution. And uh, and for that symmetrical distribution, we see that if, you know, to get 0 was 1 way up, and then for 1, it's 5 ways up, and then for 2, it's... 10 ways up, whatever, wherever, wherever the 10 is going to be. And, you know, I should make it nice and neat. These should be the same distance apart. Okay, so that probably should have been more like that. But what we've got is it's going to therefore be a symmetrical distribution. Looks something like that. Okay, and that's our binomial there. Okay, 3, 4, 5. Now, what about, here's the question, but what if, but what if P does not equal to 0 0.5, so it's not symmetrical? Okay, what if there is more chance of success than there is of fail? What if there is more chance of fail than there is success? It's going to change these. It's not going to look symmetrical anymore. So let's have a look at this um, as an example. E.g. flipping, no, not flipping, rolling, rolling a dice, say, let's look at it three times. Rolling a dice three times and wanting sixes. Okay, so we want to look at the distribution. Okay, we want to look at the distribution that 
of, let's have a look, x is distributed so that it's uh, binomially, I, I didn't write the in, b-i-n, binomially, so uh, the three times and the probability of success if we want a six is one in six. Okay, so this is a binomial distribution of three trials and the probability of success is one six. Okay, so let's have a look and see what we've got. Firstly, we want to see the probability tree, and it's still going to look the same. Okay, so we're still going to have the same, but it's, it's still going to be, you know, success or fail or, you know, success or fail or success or fail, you know, success or fail, success or fail, success or fail or success or fail, okay? You don't need to use ones and zeros. Um, I probably should use uh, something else. However, um, that's what I was... You know, that's what I was just deciding to do. Um, but you, I probably should have just used, you know, six or not six. Um, but it, it wouldn't really matter. Um, now, the thing is with these is we are still, let's say, the, let's say what is the probability of getting, uh, that X is going to get, let's say the probability of getting two sixes. Okay? The probability of getting two two sixes. So that is uh, this branch here. Okay. Uh, the next one is uh, success. Uh, that one there has got two successes. Uh, or you've got fail, success, success. Okay. So there is still, that's still going to equal to the uh, three C2, okay, that's still going to equal to 3C2. There was three trials, and we want to get two of them correct. Okay, so that's what this is talking about. But the problem is, is each of these trials, each of these three trials, do not have a probability of um, 0.5 times 0.5 times 0.5. Because, if we have a look at it, the probability of success of getting a 1 is 1 in 6, but the probability of failure is 5 in 6. So, if we have a look at this, we've got, uh, so this was, there was three ways, but this is now going to times by, what are each of these ways times by? It's times by um, 1, 6 times 1, 6, times 5, 6. So that's the first one. This branch, um, the chance of getting that is 1, 6, times 1, 6, times 5, 6. And this branch is also 1, 6, times 5, 6, times 1, 6. No, times 1, 6, okay? This one also is 1, 6, times 5, 6, times 1, 6. It's the same probability. This one here is also the same. 5, 6 times 1, 6 times 1, 6. So they're, they're still 1, 6 squared times 5, 6. That's what that one's probability is. This one had a probability of 1, 6 times uh, squared times 5, 6. This one here is 1, 6 squared times 5, 6. So what we've got is we had 3 ways of getting it and each of those ways is one six squared um times five six okay i probably should actually write this down um i'm probably writing it wrong i probably should actually write this down as five six the power of one okay times one six and i'll show you um squared I just wrote it the other way. The, the reason why is because we want to look at that in our formula. Okay, so the probability that x is equal to 2 is um, 5 over 6 times 1 over 6 squared um, is 
5 over 216 and then so therefore it's times by 3 so 5 over 72 so the probability that x is equal to 2 is 5 over 72 for this distribution now if you look at your formula we will see this I'll write it down big I'll write it in green so hopefully we can see it the, it's in the binomial distributions the probability that x equals r is equal to n c r uh, p to the power of r 1 minus p which is q to the power of n minus r okay so let's use this formula whoops let's use this formula now to work out what is the probability which hopefully it's um it's not going to be symmetrical but let's have a look and see what is the probability that you're going to get one what is the probability that you're only going to get one six now that should be higher because you're actually more likely to get um yeah sorry you're less likely to get a six so i feel like it's going to be more likely to get one six in three dice instead of uh, two sixes but let's have a look and see what we've got so um we've got the probability that x equals one is going to be our n how many trials there are we're doing three trials and we want to get r we want to get one okay so it's three c one which is three and then that's times by p okay which is chance of success which is one six times r so there's one r and um, r is just one and then times 1 minus p which is q which is a 5 6 chance and you got n minus r 3 minus 1 which is 2 so that's saying the probability of getting 1 x is equal to 1 so that getting 1 success is there is three branches looking here there'll be three branches uh, there's one of them and then the next branch is, is there and the next branch is there but each of these branches have a chance of 5 6 times 5 6 times 1 6 so each of these branches have a higher probability they've got 5 6 squared times 1 6 instead of this one that had 1 6 squared there's two of the 1 6 and then you 1 5 6 so what we end up with is, uh, let me just put this on the calculator. Um, so I'm just going to do times 1, 6 and then times by, you don't need to put this step if you don't want to. I don't really mind, mind um, but just because I've got that, I'm just doing that now. Okay, so I'm just putting that there now, but you would therefore have, you should just write in 3C1. Okay, 3C1, which was 3 there. Yeah. And then times 1, 6 squared. You can even use brackets. 1, 6. No, it's not squared. It's to the power of 1. So I totally don't need that. And then times 5, 6 and then that is squared. Okay, so I've got 25 of 72. Okay, so you had a 5 in 72 chance of getting uh, two successes. You have a 1 in... Uh, sorry, 25 in 72 chance of getting uh, 1, 6. Okay, I might just do one more example because I feel like I've been talking a while for this. Um, but just say, e.g., if you be, if you get given that x is binomially distributed for say twelve 
and 0 0.6. Okay, find the probability that x is equal to say 5. This is what we want to look at. Okay, so we are, have a 60% chance of success 12 times. And what's the chance that we get exactly, we get it successful five times? That's what this is, this is what is asking us to find that. Okay, so we're going to say that the probability, uh, let me just write these down just for you, you don't have to, but n is equal to 12, p is equal to 0 0.6, and r is equal to 5. Okay, so we're going to say, that the probability that x is equal to r is equal to n c r um, p to the power of r and then q or 1 minus p to the power of n minus r. Okay, that's the formula. Should be the same there, hopefully. Yes. Okay, but that's our formula you're going to get from your formula sheet and then we'll say probability that x equals 5 is equal to 12 choose 5, okay, by 0 0.6 to the power of 5 by 0 0.4 to the power of uh, 12 minus 5 is 7. Okay, so this is telling you that, you know, you could do 12 C5 on your calculator, there's 792 different ways you can do that. And each of those ways have this chance of occurring. So I will just put that in our calculator. So 12 C5 and then go, uh, so whatever that is, 792 times by 0.6 to the power of 5 and times 0.4 to the power of seven. Okay, so that, that is our probability. It's 0 0.1009 or approximately 10% chance. Okay, there's approximately 10% chance that you'll get five successes. Okay, if you press the SD button, it doesn't change even though it would actually be a fraction. It just probably wouldn't fit on the calculator because the number is such such a big one. Okay, what I want you to do, I know that we haven't looked at our exercise, our actual textbook for chapter 17 yet. Um, it's just that this is following your syllabus a lot better, the maths in focus, it splits it up into three exercises and then we will do 17a. So I want you to look at the maps in focus exercise. Um, it's exercise 1502. Uh, it's, yeah, it's exercise 1502, and hopefully if we just look at these notes that I was just looking at, I wanted to go through, um, we all want to understand binomial random variables, what they are, and understand this notation, identify, uh, I, can't, I can't select it, but um, I identify contexts for binomial random variables and working out using this formula. Okay, uh, good luck with your exercise. I hope this was helpful. Uh, there's so much to talk about this. I could talk about this for hours, but I tried to keep it short and sweet, hopefully.